We are back here at the LAFC Performance Center. It's inside LAFC, the Max and Vince podcast MVP. We are with the team all week. As you know, it's MLS Cup week, and uh, there's nowhere else we would rather be. It's going to be a fast ride, and we're going to be along for it, as are you. Vince LaRosa, Max Bretos, and... Uh, you're going to be thinking about LAFC every single day. This every week. single day. So we might as well bring you content every single day. And there's a lot to get... talk about, right? Yeah. I'm getting a lot of, I'm getting, the Philadelphia folks are rolling in. Um, are they bringing us cheesesteaks? No, I should have checked on that. But, I mean, that sounded like a little bit cumbersome, so I didn't ask. Jonathan Tannewald, uh, who covers that for the Philadelphia Inquirer. By the way, Philadelphia Inquirer, one of the top newspapers for covering soccer. They have a huge staff, so we're very grateful for them. Meg Swanick, so many others that are involved there um, that uh, work for the club. JP Della Camera, I'm sure he, I'm going to see him, the voice of the Phila, Philadelphia Union. I reached out to Danny Higginbotham also does that. So it all adds to a, a massive showpiece event. We've talked about it. We'll preview that game a little bit more later in the week. Later in the week. We got, it, we got, it's we big got, though, as you know. Every day this week we've got stuff planned, so we're, everything is kind of themed. So obviously we recapped Austin on Tuesday. Today is kind of like, a bigger picture, how we right. got here. What were the moments that kind of, uh, if this didn't happen, we don't think we would be here. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. I would be remiss if I didn't mention our very special guests. And that's part of the reason we're here. We're gonna get a, a c cacophony of guests throughout the week. And Mahala Apoku, who had that incredible goal against Austin, will join us. Sebastian Ibiaga, his uncle, unofficially, also will be back to talk because I think what you will notice about Mahala that is so touching and incredible because you got to remember this is he got here he was 19 20 years of age put yourself in those shoes you're not from this country never been to America you were before. you developed in florida then you come all the way to la and he has answered the bell as a young player i'm always amazed with uh, the young players how they're able to adapt but a big reason is the people around them and clearly mahala as you could see with the celebrations with some of the things they've had with kellen acosta who's mm -hmm. also put him under his wing unofficially his father uh, I heard there was so paperwork. There was they paperwork. told us there's paperwork. There's legally, some, some paperwork signed. I mean, it's a full family affair now. Yeah, everyone loves Mahala. We love Mahala. You love Mahala. We remember uh, what, more John, than just scoring these incredible goals. Remember one of the first things that John said when he was signed? Um, we already knew he was an incredible talent, but John made a point that he said, this kid showed up here every day and he had a smile, and he just grew on us. And we just loved him so much. He, it, he signed as much for his personality as he was for his talent. Yeah. I, it also makes you give a lot of credit to scouting the scouts and the coaches who had a look and Bob Bradley at the time and he saw something in him and then yep. he was he was there in this academy there in Florida and they're like yeah he's got something how scouts and coaches are so sophisticated I would never know that they can see this and I've spoken to a lot of them through the years and they go it's almost immediate you see it and he just separates from everyone else on the field right and then you make that uh, a tab Ramos who I talked about it because you almost make a knee-jerk reaction goes, this one this one so the rest of the guys out there, sorry, it's not, you're not going to be it's a not professional your day. football. Yeah. No, sometimes it's so they know then, wow. which is which is crazy. Not all the time, but certainly at that time when it was the time to show what you had, when the LAFC eyes were on you, he showed he had it. And now LAFC uh, gets, uh, gets the payoff in the sense because their faith and their belief and their eyeballs uh, all, all, all rang true. Yeah, a lot of people are – Rightfully so, talking about Philadelphia and their academy, because their academy has been connected for a while. You know, you got the Jack McGlynns, you got the Aronsons. Um, but at least had to do it without a, a steadfast LA academy, which is coming it's next year. We'll see. Yeah, I would say that they're out. still not technically fully attached. Um, I think MLS Next will really help the academy kind of bridge that gap. But you got to say, young talent. I mean, Mahala, Sifu, Cheeky. I mean, we go with stars. Mama Dufal. Mama Dufal, who's Bryce Duke, who had. Uh, who was at the game, season. by the way, oh, watching, well, watching, uh, watching his former team. I still have him going to the national team. It's he's still got time. He's young enough. He's still got time. He's closer now than he when I said it a year ago. Yes. But these are, these are players that, uh, instead of using your academy, that LAFC had to cast a very wide net, have lots of phone conversations, mm -hmm. uh, get recommendations here and abroad, which they did with the Ecuadorian guys. I'm amazed because I figured they're going to hit the nail on both these guys. They have. Right. Cheeky was amazing in that Austin game. Incredible. Sifu should have had a goal, but he continues to prove, and he is going to be a future player for Ecuador. And then the long list of players, because Mamadou Fall is from Senegal, but he was 
uh, discovered by and large in the U.S. Mm -hmm. So can you only imagine when they have this in their backyard because we know the town Los pool Angeles talent pool is it's fed, it's fed the galaxy. It also fed Real Salt Lake. It's fed a lot of you look at some of the Real Salt Lake players that came from this area and so many look in L.A. So this club is good as it is that one missing ingredient, the academy, which is developed. You know, I, I, I spoke to Seb, Sebastian Abiaga about Tony Leone. He says he has a really bright future and everything he has been able to do and experience while on the bench or training is going to pay off in a big way. And obviously, uh, Christian Torres, Eric Duenas, uh, Nathan Ordaz, that is starting to turn in a big way. And LAFC is going to benefit hugely. It's not if, it's when. I'm, I, we're kind of going off on a tangent, but I am. But I think this is a good probably, time to bring that up. Yeah, probably one of the things I'm most excited Mahalo's for next season with everything that's going on, the new TV deal, all these things is uh, MLS Next. I really want to see these guys. I want to see Nathan Ordaz play week in, week out. I want to see if Tony Leone takes that next step to the first team or if he you know, plays a little bit with MLS Next and plays his way into it. Um, it was fun to watch Vegas this year, and that was one of our guests from Denny a Masofi couple weeks ago. Denny was kind of a fine, too, although he yeah. was in USL and a little bit older than that. No, but they scouted him, and yeah. remember, he was at Reno. San Jose Earthquakes could have had him all day, every day. They, 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 all they had to say was that guy, and they didn't. We scouted him, brought him here, and look where he is now. He's probably going to be the starting number nine for, for RSL in the years to come. Unbelievable. It's fantastic. And that's part of also with LAFC. We were so happy uh, for all the players that have been part of this season. Pancho Janela winning for Nacional in Uruguay, winning a title with Luis Suarez. Um, Raito, uh, Brian Rodriguez getting to – it fell short for Club America, but he was a featured player for them down the stretch, and Ismail Tajiri Shradi and Danny Masofsky and the long list of guys that were all part of this. Uh, they're mentioned all the time here, and that's it's fantastic. Mamadou Fall and several others who are on loan mm -hmm. and will be back, and this club will have a, a greater foundation. But as we said, today we're going to look at some of the key games that we thought really shaped this season. We're able to push LAFC closer to where they are now, a few days away, here on a Wednesday, mm -hmm. a few days away from – the MLS Cup and potentially lifting the biggest trophy they have on offer. Yeah, I'll little, let you. Little markers on the road to MLS oh, Cup so final, exciting. right? Little milestones. Are you gonna let me start? Yeah, I will. It was his idea. It was my was idea, was and also what, when when I listed mine that I would want to talk about mine. If we go in chronological order, my first one starts with that first game. I, Rapids. I, the Rapids at home. At home. Uh, Carlos Vela obviously has a hat trick in that game. That was a big one for Carlos Vela because a lot of us were worried about. What we would get from Carlos Vela, but the bigger picture was, what were we going to get from this team in general? We didn't get to see a lot of them in preseason because a lot of the games were behind closed doors. We knew that they did that for a reason because Steve wanted to have more of a just kind of inside track with his team, not distractions. It was his first season as a professional coach. We didn't quite know what was going to go on with that. Um, so when we go into that Colorado game, we, you know, Colorado, by the way, reigning Western. Uh, Regular season Western oh, champions. so long ago. Right, it does. <laughs> Sorry, Colorado. <laughs> that was LAFC a year ago. Colorado was the Western but I think regular we, season champ. We went into it and we were like, eh, I mean, a draw wouldn't be too bad. Um, but you'd like to win at home. And then they just dominated the game, really, from start to finish. And I thought that that really kind of set the tone where you and I were at least on the record of saying, look, we've talked with Steve Trundolo. We know what his basis is in – not only his playing, but the amount of work he put in to get his UEFA A license, and then the amount of time he spent in Germany to really work up the coaching ranks. So we felt he was going to have uh, an ability to command a presence in this team and, and put in it and instill a plan. And plus, he had he had the backup of his assistants, Mark Dos Santos, Ante Razov, uh, Razov, who we knew well. Oka, we got to learn a little bit more about. Um, so we felt good about it, but I still think the day of, I'm sure both of us showed up and were like, Plus, all the, could happen. all the new players that had signed right. that we had a feeling they would do well, but they certainly did. And, you know, Maxime Crepeau and Ilya Sanchez, the veteran players that were brought in, Kellen Acosta, they, you, you saw at an early point that they were going to be a part of this. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's obviously a different story now how well uh, incorporated they are. But you saw that and you felt comfortable because at the end of the previous year, it was a young, untested team. It was a team that had no depth. We got to see a little of that depth, which would get a lot deeper, and we also saw those players hitting their marks. If we're going to go chronological order, I'll go next. Okay. And I want to mention those two early road trips 
LAFC turned out to be a great road team. Eight mm -hmm. road wins, culminating with the incredible victory in Portland, which helped them secure the Supporter Shield, which I'm internally grateful for. Because of that, I got to keep the Nashville game on our home broadcast and say and goodbye to everyone. And, and we're here now for this. We're going to remind now. you guys all week how important that Supporter Shield was in the regular season. Otherwise, season. we'd be packing our bags right now tonight and probably flying to Philadelphia tomorrow. Yeah. Early a.m., 6 a.m. Oh, and it would be like that for us. We'd have a red eye and a quick turnaround. It would be the worst. All due respect, I like Philadelphia. I really do. It's that okay. airport, though. I don't know if you've been to the Philadelphia airport. I have not. It's very claustrophobic. It's very claustrophobic. You're getting in there. You're, everyone's, There's not many airports that I like, actually. Just Yeah, but some of them have these nice wide corridors. Philadelphia's yeah. like this. So you're like bumping in. Yeah. No wonder those people Huge are so Huge line angry. at Chick-fil-A. Ugh. So. If you're in I'm Philly hungry. and you're eating at Chick-fil-A, you're doing it yeah, right. Yeah, at the Philadelphia airport. And then the stadium is obviously a little off the beaten path. Yeah. Which uh, having a stadium in the heart of the city is a little different. So no road trip there, but we had two big road trips across the country to Florida. I'm going to lump them in together. It was the Miami game against Inter and then Orlando City. These were two dates I guarantee you those clubs circled, said this is the game mm -hmm. that we are going to show our intentions for the season. Inter-Miami, more so Orlando City. We felt it there. It was like this right. is Orlando City's game. They're struggling. They're, this is the game they're going to get take, and LAFC is going to be knocked down uh, a peg or two. I remember it was really windy in Inter Miami. Yeah, a lot of trash on the field. If yeah, you we were that. doing a 110 football live stream, and we were getting nervous. And then Ismail Tajiri Shradi, which to me who scored this goal, and obviously Ismail Tajiri Shradi had his injury issues and now is with New England. It was a moment where I said, man, several different guys could rise to the occasion. And that turned out to be one of the main themes of this LAFC squad, especially when they added more players uh, in that secondary window, mm -hmm. that different guys would step up. And it happened there in that crazy, windy game. I, w I would remember so many La South American players on our team. It would be nice if they could stay in Miami to celebrate such a big win. But they were flying back out. Mm -hmm. Business trip. And then they got that win because winning road games – is tough, but doing it across the country. And the Orlando trip happened right afterwards, right? In bad weather. Um, both games had bad starts for the team. They weren't necessarily clicking, didn't necessarily go to script. And this is, I think, a theme we're going to carry throughout this is LAFC's ability to right the ship and figure it out in the second half and either grind it out or Steve just changes things where they just overwhelm a team. But I think the, both Miami and Orlando, it was like, guys, we're going to really have to grind this out. And they did. And to, to your point, you travel cross country, then you deal with the weather. You have teams keyed up to play against you. And Coming off of season two, and again, it was a different LAFC team. It was didn't have the depth, didn't have the investment uh, where the, you, you really hold on for dear life on those away games. Mm -hmm. You couldn't exactly think that LAFC was going to get a result, and they didn't. But this Early on here, they showed that they were going to be tough as a visitor. Yeah. But, I mean, we swept Florida. Florida. Not bad feeling. I wish Florida State could do that sometimes. Ah. I, and, They're going to do it this year. Sweet Florida. Miami and to bring Florida. up uh, Izzy, I mean, for a short time here, some very influential goals. Uh, you would say that to seal off that game in Miami, he had that. And then obviously that the worldy that he had against Sporting KC. That, I think, top three LFC goal all time, not just this season. Um, good for you, Izzy. A, yeah. a guy that we miss here. Um, hopefully he gets better. Uh, he's dealing with some injuries. Um, I would love. To, I ho I'm just hoping he plays again. I know there's, there's a lot of love for the former players, and we've talked about in the past where they have positioned these guys to go to another club and flourish. Mm -hmm. I think you saw that with Bryce Duke. And I, I was talking to Team Security Paul, and he's worked for all the big sport teams here, the Lakers all the way down. He goes, there's nothing quite like this. And it's that family feel where, I mean, obviously when you trade a player, it's not going to always end well because that player is – it's gonna to want to. You always hear. I want to. I want to. Yeah, you trade a these. player and then you go to MLS Cup Final. Players I, get kind of like, hey man. <laughs> but from this perspective, there's that a lot of love for, and mm -hmm. it's important. We saw Tyler Miller tweet. We saw you know Walker Zimmerman, Tristan Blackman, Tristan Mark Blackman Anthony Kay. Were, all these guys are reaching out saying it was just a matter of is time. That normal? I don't think so. I don't think so. Usually, it's like those people are dead to me. Oh. So there you go. So the alumni very very important to this club. Well, I think if we're going in chronological order, yours is going to be – you got another one. Okay. And it's another road, another road trip. Another road trip. We all tuned in. It was on 2DN, Columbus game. We know a lot of traveling support 
not earmarked for that one. And it was for good reason in the end because uh, <laughs> yeah. it went on and on. And I remember Michele what G was Giannone, pool? who's here a fair amount, who works for two hours and 37 minutes of yeah. delay. Yeah, and the, the two Dana guys were going, oh, man, what are, my, 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 whole, my whole weekend's been shot. Right. I don't blame him. As a, as a broadcaster, I would feel that, too. Mm -hmm. You set some plans later in the day, and you can't do it. But then they came on. They said, look, if we don't get this game under our belt, we're going to have to postpone it till tomorrow. And you're like, oh, no. No one wants Nobody to spend the wants. night in Columbus. Wow, I didn't say that. I didn't say I that. I thought that's where you were going. <laughs> okay, you're right. No one wants to spend well, no one wants to spend the night at Columbus if you're not there for another reason. I mean, if you're there for a work trip, you don't want to extend the day. And everyone just panics. And I think it was at 30 minutes to go before they would have had to postpone. They would have had to shut down that stadium, uh, low and field. And LAFC would have had to go to their hotel, come back Sunday early morning to play it. Nobody wants that. Also, the lineup is, like, sealed at that point, right? you got to put the same lineup out there, the same guys on the bench. So if so somebody, come out, somebody wasn't delay. feeling well or something like that, you still got to go out there. So we didn't know what to expect. Now, granted, that was going to affect Columbus crew as well. So, but then again, they get to if they they get to go home to their beds and their families. LAFC, mm -hmm. not that, and it throws off the entire week. You probably lose a day of training or something along those lines. Yep. It would have been a bad scene. Probably shouldn't happen, by the way. You probably get that game in as long as it's not midnight or one a.m. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's a different story for now. LAFC came out and were victorious in that game. And it was for the first time we saw a practical, resourceful LAFC, whereas LAFC had this one identity all the time on how to play mm -hmm. because of the circumstances. And they, didn't, they weren't fully loaded at the time. They were played a little differently. They, they allowed Columbus to possess. And LAFC showed that they could be successful playing a different style. And that style has come up a few times since uh, maybe notably in that galaxy game where they weren't really possessing as much mm -hmm. as they like they they've been able to adapt and i think that was the first lesson that showed that they could do it so moving forward obviously that's really important that uh lafc under steve Turundolo, we're going to do things a little differently here uh if the right horses for the course or courses and in that case this was the best way to get the result and they did i think it's the first time i'd ever heard anyone in a coaching position or a player for LAFC say the plan was to be in a low block right never, like we heard like mid heard blocks that. or we're trying to step up or they put us under pressure so we had to be in a low block for a little bit but he said look we saw the conditions we saw what happened with the delay we saw our players fitness and we said guys huddle around this is what we're going to do low block let's counter them let's give them some of the ball we think if we get some space behind them we can get some joy it worked it worked, and but those, back it back in uh, LA Saturday night. But as as we're as we're kind of alluding to, and while we're doing this, these little things matter when it adds up. So when Steve goes to them and says, "Guys, go with me on this. I want to do this," they'll think back and go, "Worked in Columbus. It worked against Inter Miami or Orlando when you asked to do something different." And a lot of guys have actually alluded to this. They're like, "We believe what he tells us because what he tells us is what happens." Or when we come at, when we come in at halftime and we're wondering, because they're always kind of chatting, hey, this should happen, this is going on. And Steve goes, guys, look, 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 this is what's going on in the game. You do this and you'll, we'll do better. And it happens. And that just gives you that, that core belief that he can, he can dictate a room. He can talk to a room. doesn't matter who's in it, Gareth Bale, Carlos Vela, anyone in that room. They're like, look, he knows what he's talking about. I'm going to follow him. Right. So those are the three road trips, three of eight road wins, which really help put LAFC in the position they were eventually are, which is Western Conference champs preparing for MLS Cup. We got a lot we? of road games in our uh, things. I, but I, I want to do I some think, home because there are some I know, special but I home think they, games. They, uh, home is just, it's a special place for us, but it's like, it's their comfort zone. And I feel like road games are where you're defined, where you, you make your bones. That's where you show you're a really good team. This was in the month of May. I wouldn't say it's up there, but the first game between LAFC Philadelphia, which I'm sure a lot of people are going to rewatch, I would say that's up there too. Mm -hmm. And it certainly applies to their opponent this weekend. Uh, a game where they fell behind twice yeah. and were able to respond and get a goal. I think there was moments there where we said, "Oh, this is going to be this is going to be a home loss." But LAFC battled that Franco Escobar goal. Who could forget where he's waving the team, going, mm -hmm. "Come on, let's get the winner!" Right. That was that was a that was a good home home experience, certainly. And obviously, certainly in hindsight, obviously the Galaxy game at home that kicks them off into a seven game winning streak, and we were all coming into that going, "We can't." There's no way they're going to lose three times to the Galaxy, right? Like, this just can't happen. Uh, so I think that was important for their psyche. Obviously, it worked out well going into the playoffs. I think they knew if they come to our home, there's no way we're losing it here. Um, I, I still remember 
Giorgio after that game. Yeah, it was a good game, but we're up three to one and they score and the guys, this can't happen. You can't have this in the Derby and that's when he, the infamous, there's so many goals in this Derby. This is not a Derby. <laughs> still are, hasn't changed. Yeah, there still are. Uh, but I'm going to go back on the road, and it's going to be coming after that that bright seven-game period. Uh, there was that little period where, like, the LAFC just couldn't buy a win. Um, they also couldn't seem to buy a call because this was the Minnesota game after the Dallas game when Great they call. just they had just played about 90, 90, sorry, about 80 minutes down a man. They were up a goal. They weren't able to hold on to it because of a lapse in focus at about a five-minute period. Uh, and we were all – everybody was ready to basically throw dirt on LAFC and say, ah, Sporter Shield's gone. Uh, these guys are done. What if, Chemistry's bad. How big was that point? It was huge. Well, and then they go down a goal, playing playing in a formation that they had to play as a result of the fact that they couldn't use Ryan Hollingshead. Franco Escobar was still dealing with some injury problems, so they had to – Denny Buong is playing at auxiliary, albeit, left wing back. Um, but they go down, and then the captain in the second half – we hadn't seen it in a while. The curler. He brought the curler oh. back out. Really, I mean, I, I love outside a finish. Outside the area. Outside the area. I love a finish that goes in the top corner. And is it, as quick as it's in the goal, it's immediately back out because it just uh, trampolines off the back, uh, back of the net. I thought that was a big moment. They weren't able to get all three points, but it, it felt like the ship was finally righted. And it was like, guys, even in our worst moment, even in our lowest period of the season, which this definitely is, we were able to find a way through our captain and then I think they, they really kind of felt like, we'll be, we'll be okay here. We will be okay here, and they, they stepped up from there. LAFC uh, didn't have a lot of ties this season, which served them well. Uh, you want wins. I mean, in the sport of soccer, I hate to sound so elementary here, but they, make, they give you three points, encourages you to go for the win mm -hmm. as opposed to settle for a tie. And LAFC do that. But this was a time where the tie made a lot of sense. And I, I, I'll put it in this is how You were it, much maligned because afterwards you said, that's a good road point. Yeah, and don't have that. If you don't have that point, by the way, we're not talking about what our last one is going to be, and we're not here again. We're what? back in the Philadelphia airport. Yeah, Ooh. getting Chick Fil A. See, guy knows his stuff. Or, or a really bad airport cheesesteak. Sounds pretty good right now. So uh, I would. I remember. Obviously, we do the road games from uh, Burbank uh, in our studios there at Australia. And I remember driving home, and sometimes you don't feel good. I felt really good after that Minnesota. I was like, yeah. that was it. I mean. That was a very I saw a team that didn't give up Minnesota. when they easily could have given up. And I go, we don't get a lot of points. That's a good point. And now it looks even bigger than that because we needed that. It wasn't going to be a situation where we might win that game. It was going to be either tie or lose. And right. people were upset because they were still in the midst of a, a bad patch. But that one, I think, set them up for success down the stretch. Yeah, look, the way you play in adversity, the, the tenor – the, the vibe is, is just as important as the point sometimes. And I think that's the bigger discussion that we had here was like they were unwilling to relent and give up even when they probably could have and should have. Uh, and it just made it. And then when you stack the point up, as we said, if they didn't have that, they wouldn't have the supporter shield. It becomes that much bigger. But again, I want to just go back to the ability to really kind of suck it up and say, guys, the guys that are on the field are playing. I remember we talked about Kellen Acosta played like seven positions in that game. Remember, he was everywhere. Yeah. So just the willingness to do that and to fight through it, I, it bodes well for a team. And you and I have covered many a teams where sometimes they just don't do that. And this LFC team does, even with the big names, even with Carlos Vela, you know, stepping up in that moment. You could take that night off, but they didn't. I'm so happy for Kellen Acosta. He got traded here, and he wanted he had aspirations to play in Europe. He's a little bit older, I think 27 now. So you wonder, is Europe in his future? But he gets this opportunity. He's comfortable here. He's going to play in MLS Cup, flourishing with the national team. He's going to play in Qatar. It's, uh, and a big reason is what he's done here, uh, being able to play those positions, because my guess he might play a couple in Qatar. I think there's one more game on this list. Yeah, we, we have the same, so why don't you do, do the honors? You will uh, all remember it. And uh, the trip to Portland, which is a huge fixture for LAFC, regardless if you're in a playoff chase or a supporter shield chase or not. LAFC, uh, despite all the road wins, it had been a minute since they got one, and now they came in here. Earlier in the day, or the day before, they got all the news that if they were victorious, they would win the Supporter Shield. Doesn't mean they're going to win it. Wrap it up that weekend. Wrap it up that weekend. And remember the final game? They lost to Nashville. Who knows what that game looks like? Mm -hmm. uh, but it would appear that if you don't get the victory, maybe Philadelphia, who had lost to Charlotte that weekend, which opened door, so hats off to Charlotte FC. We gotta maybe send them something, a nice scarf or something. I don't know if they want the scarf. 
Maybe a Team it. Security Paul shirt. Everybody, everybody uh, wants everyone one. Wants a everybody wants shirt. one of those yeah. or a bumper sticker. So it was, it was a big occasion. LAFC took the lead, and then it went away, and they took it back. We were waiting for Denny Buanga to announce his arrival, and he did there in spectacular fashion. And it was huge because the supporters, I, we were talking about it, you know, Seth Burton and everyone says, LAFC can win the Supporter Shield this week. And I'm like rolling my eyes. I go, that's not going to happen. You need this, this, this. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm like on the weekend going, yeah, we were like just, running out of digits here. Just be happy you control your destiny. Just win the next two and we don't even have to, like, just, let's just take care of business. Everyone thought they would do Nashville, but nothing's guaranteed. You know, mm-hmm. the old expression, don't put off until tomorrow. And they did it. That was such a big time move by LAFC. And looking back now, it to me, it shaped the team that was preparing for the postseason, the team that we see today. And as an added bonus, and I know this is not a minor detail for the supporters of LAFC, it essentially knocked Portland out of the playoffs. It's true. The reigning Western champs. Yeah, I mean, it was, you wrap up the shield. It's a coming out party for Denny Buonga. I still love that uh, we got to do that game live as a watch along on 110 football, and we got to have a lot of fun. We got to pop some champagne. Uh, but still, one of my favorite memories, though, is after we nap later. after we kind of like settled down a little bit. Max and I were just downstairs talking, and you you were on your phone as Max normally is. Um, you're on your phone, and you go, "Look, you think he was going to score from there?" And you show me the picture of him picking up the ball, and I was like, "No chance." No. And he dribbled all the, you know, it was like 25 yards at the touch line, dribbles in, takes on three guys, uh, is able to finish it off. That was huge. But don't forget, it was another Carlos Curler that put us up, but then we capitulated in the 81st minute. So many crosses. Remember Portland was just in cross after cross after cross. And that guy, Dyron Espria, who has has a knack for scoring uh, goals that are a thorn in people's side. At 1-1, we were pretty defeated, but remember Steve made the change, and they went for it. How many times have we seen that? Even in the playoffs where they yeah. you gave a lead and you go, oh, here we go. It's, it's why you and I are coaches. Still got the, it's, I know. We got the last year in our mind, but they responded against Portland. They res- they responded against the Galaxy. They keep responding in, in that way, and it's that is a, uh, that's a mindset. But what that's I want to say is you, you and I were despondent. Oh, yeah, I was. Well, you I, 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 he, he, had, he had a bigger reason. He, he was possibly going to lose his final call without, without – Without even like a, a whisper, it was just going to be gone, just ripped out of his hands. Like Brenos didn't, Brenos um, is still calling those games because he didn't say anything to us on the broadcast. Well, I would not have. Known. I was despondent just because I take losses hard and yeah, I don't, fun. I don't do well. I was and then about my long drive from Burbank. And then the VAR controversy, we're screaming and yelling, and then Denny Buanga. Denny Buanga. But Son but Denny we do Buanga. we should we do need to point out that at one one. Steve and Ilya told us this, which we couldn't keep referring to Ilya a lot because he's been on the podcast like and 10 he times. Is, spoke the gospel to us what he said is come to fruition well but remember he told us he goes uh he took me out because max you go he took you out he's like did it tell you he was really going for it he said the one time in my life i i was like i don't think the coach knows what he's doing but two seconds in i sat there i wanted i'm happy that i came out yeah and two seconds later once he saw what the plan was to go for it he goes actually i'm happy steve trundlow exhibit 167a (laughs) we should have been keeping that uh he knows what he's doing Mm -hmm. and it's paid off. Maybe there's a few gambles along the way, but again, if they lost to Portland, yeah, who cares. Just goes to show you all these moments that matter. Up. And you know, you need to win. We should just put this out there. If you're watching us or you're listening, we'll put it out as a tweet. Share with us what were your moments. What do you think? And I'll, again, I'll position it to you this way: If this doesn't happen, it doesn't have to be a game. Maybe it's just a moment or a goal. This doesn't happen. I do not believe LAFC is hosting the MLS Cup final on Saturday. That's a good one. So put it I'm in. Sure, there's some ones that we put it on mention. YouTube. Put it on Twitter. We'll put it out there from 110 Football and from LAFC, and we'll see what what people think. We'll be back here tomorrow. More special guests. We're gonna have a lot of good stuff. But right now, the guests will be coming in. They all want to be in these chairs. <laughs> this is going to be. This is a fun one. This is gonna be. We all love Mahala. I scored the big goal against Austin. We'll talk about his development. Sebastian Ibiaga will tell. Will help us along the way with that narrative. This is Inside LAFC Max Events Podcast. We'll be back with the players next. And we are back here Inside LAFC MVP Podcast. As they say in a stock car racing, we're going four wide. <laughs> Mahala Apoku. Who's your, who's your favorite uh, NAS- Who's your favorite NASCAR driver? Who's your favorite NASCAR driver? Don't, <laughs> no, don't say don't, Dale don't, Jr. Don't answer. <laughs> Baba. 
Say it louder. Bubba. <laughs> there you go. What's going on it's, over here? Well, Sebastian Ibiaga also actually, rejoices if, if, here. To it, actually, if anyone from the team is gonna know NASCAR driver, it has to be Seb because North Carolina, that <laughs> area of the world, like you yeah. gotta you gotta know something Thanks. about so it. Johnson and Dale Earnhardt. Uh, that's all I kind of know. I think. I don't believe you. I think you can go a few further down. If I have to think about it, I can get. I think I can get a few more. One of my favorite. Before we get into the big moments of this this uh, this season, one of my favorite moments from the Austin game. Obviously, your goal. You were there moments later to share it. Kellen Acosta, like proud family members. Your reaction to have the goal, but to have your your guys, your family, come over and celebrate with you. Uh, it was it was an amazing feeling. And uh, when I saw Kellen coming, oh my goodness! I know <laughs> where I get the energy from. I was so hype. And <laughs> what, what did they tell you? <laughs> they were so happy. They were so proud of me for for me to score in a big game like this. They were really proud of me, and uh, that that meant a lot to me, you know, because you have people who are you are doing you are doing your work, and people who are proud of you, and uh, and you look up to them. It's really great to have them around. You guys did a little, a little dance partner thing there as well. Yeah, I mean, that's the baby jet <laughs> dance. You know, it's was, actually not a good dance for U.S. national team. Yes, that's the that's the dance that SMR Gion did uh, when he when, when he scored uh, against the U.S. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so you yeah, see, yeah, yeah. see so that, it's not actually so it's not. <laughs> <that's, laughs> Better with you. It's actually not the best dance, but the goal that sent the USA out of the 2010 World Cup is celebrating it here in Los Angeles. Mahala Boko. See, he's not only the nice guy you think he is. Yeah, man. Just you know, <laughs> you just have to do it. You just I have like to do it. It, it just, it just time. You know, Wait, it, am I correct that when you score goals, you get Jordans? How does that work? New shoes. New shoes. It's just um, when I score goals, I treat myself like. But, uh, <laughs> That's what you're gonna call it? You just treat yourself? That's yeah, it? Yeah, I buy myself a shoe. How many goals okay. have you scored this year? I take myself to dinner. How many, yeah. how many times have you scored? Um, eight. Eight. So that's eight new pairs of shoes this year. That wow. you pay for. That yeah, he, I pay for. Well, what pair of shoes? Yeah, Absolutely what, not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are you doing? You, you scored a goal that's going to help lead to MLS Cup Final. Well, then you got to raise it up. Like, what shoes are you getting or where are you going well, out to dinner? Now, I, I don't know. I'm just I'm just thinking about it. You know? I'm just looking at which oh, You, you just don't want to give us the exclusive on the podcast. I see how it is. Well, you get it. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you say you get it. You're going down a couple <laughs> runs, Mahala, in my books. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, what about dinner? Where's the place you go? Uh, I go to Yard House. Which he never invites me, by the way. Yard House? Just saying. I never get invited. But uh, it do you want to go to Yard House? I don't, actually. Yeah. What and, is uh, it's, it's so that a bar? No, no, you going to bars? No, you drinking now? Busted. Argentina <laughs> restaurant. Oh, uh, nice yeah, okay. It's, okay. It's, yeah. It's the best steak. Uh, I like chimichurri? Chimichurri. The sauce. It's like the green and the uh, garlic. Oh. It's get like that a salsa time. almost. Uh, get that next time. That's, that's what is it? It's parsley and, yeah. and onions and garlic. Uh, for me, just the steak and uh, mashed potatoes and um, leaves, you know? Yeah. Good man. Whatever you do, keep doing it. Mm. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't change. Don't change. <laughs> well, let's talk, let's talk a little bit about, about big moments. Max and I have been ta sharing kind of our moments that we thought throughout the season meant something or kind of milestone moments. Uh, what, to either of you, what first thing that kind of comes to your head is like, if this didn't happen in the season, we wouldn't be where we were. You want me to go first? Uh, ooh. I think I, I put a lot of how we play now on that huge winning streak we had mm -hmm. in what was it, like May, June or something? Yes, games. seven games. Seven that game. seven game. I think that was huge. I think starting with the Galaxy game. I yes, think. I think it created so much confidence and so much positivity within our squad that that same energy is still propelling us. I think big winning streaks have a huge impact on teams for sure. Yeah, yeah, that's what mine is. Yeah, for me, like um, the starting of the season, uh, it was it was really great. We started we started in a good note. Everybody was uh, fighting because we were just fighting to to fit in and then to because we have a um, dream we have aim we want to be in the top so we got to push hard and uh, we started on a good note so the starting of the season was great for us so yeah how, how early did you guys know that this was a special club that right now is preparing for an MLS Cup when did that know okay well you see it's not only about you playing the on the field it's about how well you know each other how friendship you know like 
it's like I'm mean, with Selv and Kellen or all the players, we close to each other, how we play to each other, it's like we're all free to each other. And uh, the bond, the brotherhood we have is, is really great. That is how it's making us do what we are doing now. You know? yeah. yeah. So that's what I think. I can't really say anything more. That's well, great. Yeah. where do you rank the moment when you were adopted by Kellen? Where is that? <laughs> <laughs> Officially uh, as a cost of son. <laughs> when was that? That was a couple months ago. You got ago. It, the placard on your oh, locker? It's still there. It's official. It's still there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were just playing uh, two touch for fun, you know, and... Um, you never won. That's what happened. Ooh. That's what happened, though. This goes out to the public, too. Yeah. You never won. Uh, bro, the game was five games, and Here you go. won. Now you just give some excuse. Two. Okay, I never won. Thank I you. won one. One, bro. Twice? <laughs> no, once. Okay, once. <laughs> yeah. And um, not gonna I signed a camera. paper and everything, so basically his son and <laughs> my uncle. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> <laughs> are you guys still playing the two touch game or is it like uh, you retired it because it's just not going well for you because nope. i'm going to say if you are you kind of kind of got to keep losing because that's been a good vibe for I the have season not retired from that one you know <laughs> it's just that now we have a lot of companies you know companies like companies a lot of people want to be in our company you know oh so, be in your crew huh? yeah. they yeah. saw how much fun you guys were having it was, yeah. it's, Chill so, out. Uh, <laughs> so we just paused it a little bit so we have a we just having fun with our playmates, you know. So, well. You know Seb is here just to verify all your stories. We, we've heard that you might be stretching the truth a little bit. Bro, I'm telling the truth. Man. You are? Yeah, I'm yeah. just here to make sure the facts yeah, we're just, told. And you. We just know that if he's here, but you're he not going to. He knows my dad cheated a lot. He knows, you know? That's not true. <laughs> How could you cheat at a two-touch game? Exactly. My you know, dad have, cheat a lot. <laughs> it has to, have to be fun, you know. It is Give fun. Give him a good passes. No, you it's don't. You play too nice. That's what the real problem is. Right. Aren't you, you're supposed to tell him a little mean streak. Yeah. And you, do you have that in you? I have that in me in, uh, in the game. Like, yeah. yeah, for opponent side, you know, but for my playmate side, you know, just a little chill. You know? yeah. By the way, first time in uh, MLS uh, Cup history that a father and son will play. <laughs> In the big game, <laughs> and an uncle, and his wow, yeah, a lot. it's a family affair. It's a fa I mean, we're making, we're breaking new ground. Uh, I want to talk about the fun. I mean, this is, is this as much fun as you've had playing? Because I get here and it's contagious. Because when you 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 come to training, it's like usually it's business, but you guys are not only having fun but encouraged to have fun. Yeah, this is definitely one of the most fun environments and soccer environments I've been a part of. But it kind of, like he kind of said earlier, it alludes to how close we are. That we understand that we can have fun even when we're playing, but you know when it's time to go, it's like, all right, guys, like, let's go. So it's just kind of like a flip of a switch, and it's mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah. Well, you brought. I mean, your big moment was the winning streak. So then, how did that friendship help you guys in the? What happened after the winning streak yeah. was a little bit of a falter. So were you able to keep smiling, yeah. kind of keep exactly. happy yeah. in that time? Yeah. Yeah, because uh, in life. Uh, it's not always smoothly. Sometimes you have it rough, but the good thing is how you come back at the top, you know. When you fall, you need to be up. You don't have to be down, just everybody step on you, you know. And you it's much to, easier when you have yeah. 20, 19 other guys stepping with you. Yeah, so, and uh, we fought back to, to be on our feet, and by the grace of God, everything went well. So we're not done yet. We still have one more to go, you know. Yeah. So. Where did you guys feel like in that little kind of blip where you, like, you kind of got back into feeling good again because i know you have the houston game where like look yeah. you guys just you clobbered them and it yeah. just wasn't your day that's that's like the classic like hey is this the first time you started watching soccer yeah. this happens yeah. like, this is what it is was it that i know there was the win when you came back home for a hot second mm -hmm. rsl but then you had to go back on the road was there a, a moment even for you mahalo where you felt like yeah, we had a rough patch, but we're, we're, we're going to be back, and people are going to be sorry when we get back. Yeah, for me, uh, as as we were saying, like, I feel it like this is, um, I don't know, struggle time, but all we got to do is to fight back, you know. We, know. we don't want the struggle to win. We have to win against the struggle. So, And even the struggle makes you strong, and uh, it really helps us to, to, even, to be better than where we were, you know, so... It's really great, and uh, I thank God that we fought back and we won. You know, so. 
I know it's a little bit past now, but can I ask you about that goal? Because uh, I haven't really seen one like that. The ball, Denny's pressuring, mm -hmm. and then they want to clear it. It pops up in the air, a couple oh, bounces. Yeah, the, the wicked spin right on that. to your yeah. feet, but then you knew to hit it then. Yeah, um, when the ball was spin, so I knew the ball would come back, so I didn't go up speed. So I just, a little bit, like I was going there, and the defender went full speed, then mm -hmm. the ball come back. So I tried to shoot it once, but it was. You didn't hit it well, didn't you? I did, you miss hit it. I watched the replay. <laughs> Hold on, sorry. No, no, it was a nice goal. I'm not. I'm not saying. But you goalkeeper was a little off his line. Just hit it a little bit. You can't tell me that you I struck that nicely. I can say I because I watched the replay. If you if, if you watch the replay, you see, you see his feet. Yeah, feet like feet. It's, it's not because the way the ball was spinning. Exactly. You have to be. That was a hard hit. I don't know what he's don't talking. Get me wrong. It's still a goal. It's, it's still, still a goal. Don't get me wrong. It, but I, I take my it. time. I take my time to shoot because I tried to shoot it first, but I was like, oh man, if I shoot that, it's going away. Oh, the ball will go out. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I take my time and uh, I get it well. I get it well, bro. It was a good goal. But it wasn't. Uh, I know you miss it, it though. But I know you good. but it's fine. Yeah. It's okay. Eight goals this season. You had the CONCACAF Champions League goals. This one the best? The CCL game? Uh, Which one is my best goal was uh, CONCACAF. That was my first goal. That was my first goal for the club. And uh, this one was so good too because it's a big game. And uh, for me to, to score in a game like this is really great for me. So, yeah. And uh, big ones are coming. So, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I put him as my wild card for the playoffs. <laughs> I said it before the playoffs started. I was like, Mahal is going to be a wild card. And look what he's done. Uh, your dad, by the way, I, I did a <laughs> – sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. Kellen Acosta, playing for those along. that haven't been Kellen playing along, along. I did a podcast with Tosin and, uh who is, does a lot of cool content. And he said, Kellen is the best-dressed American player, hands down. Hands down. You agree? Uh, yeah. Hundred percent, and my uncle is the second one. Second one. Yeah. Well, I'm not. A, well, I'm not American technically. <laughs> oh, yeah. American based. There you, go. you okay. would still apply. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm second. That's yeah. Good hey, said we need some. Who's better? We do need some center back. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> if we can, if you get the call, yeah. can you please I, answer uh, it and say yes. <laughs> nice artwork. I mean, I'd put you up there. Yeah, um, Kelly is the best dresser. That's my stuff. I'm right here. He's you can wait for me to leave. <laughs> What is it about? Wait, what is it about should, Kellen that's better? You need to be that's, told, that's bro. Wild, that's that's wild. what you told me. All right, that's cool. Is that always has to say the truth? It is what bro? it is. Have you, you seen a difference in his fashion since he's been hanging out with you guys? No. <laughs> it looks pretty good. It's a nice look. It's all right. <laughs> we can do better. <laughs> we can do better. <laughs> You're always casual. Yeah, bro. You know, it's not bad. I didn't say it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> We did. I did get to see you at the LAFC Foundation when you were in the tuxedo. Yeah, that yeah. was new. <laughs> yep. He that FaceTimed Kellen new. and myself. We made uh, sure you uh, FaceTimed them. A family moment. <laughs> we made sure he was picking the right color. Everything. I just, uh, um, he looked I good. I asked them what to buy, and yeah. and they just told me to buy this and that. Yeah. And, uh, you look good. That was a good suit. It, that was good. You know what's nice is they're actually leading you in the right direction too, because they could totally <laughs> tell you to spiral off. <laughs> you might show up in like a Dumb and Dumber outfit, you know. So that that's that's nice of them to at least do that for you. But I'm sure there's a little hazing. I guess the hazing happened in the two touch game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that yeah. one. Yeah, it's tough for you. Um, for me, Kellen and um, Seb, they've been great to me. You know, like I look I look up to them. They're my big brothers. They've been taking care of me, um, giving me the advice that will help me. So it's really great to have such a big brothers in, in the team and um, who always tell you the right thing to do. So I'm really great to I'm really grateful to to have them, you know. So that's lovely. A little, little heartfelt yes, moment. Today I'm talking <laughs> good about him, you know. <laughs> no, I don't believe you. <laughs> hey, where, what days from the heart, you know? <laughs> Seb, what have you seen in the growth of his game this year? Where have you seen where I guess he's still it, it, he's still a very young player. The, the yeah. his ceiling's very high. Where do you see it? I mean, I think, obviously, I didn't see him play at all last year, but I felt at the beginning of the season he was a lot more raw, and he's definitely fine-tuning certain aspects of his game. And it's just little things like his first touch before, to set him up for a shot. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just stuff like that. And also just having the confidence to take chances and understanding that if he misses, he misses. I tell him all the time, if you miss, you miss. Cool. You're going to miss more than you score as a striker. It's just literally the stats. So... Unless you're just prolific, but that's different. You're not there yet. You you get there though. I you're not Holland yet. I, yeah, you will get there. Mahalo, that's him. Um, I, I find it amazing because when you're in a, a game and this you weren't on the field with uh, Carlos at the end of this game or Chicho, but Carlos, Chicho, Garrett Bale, 
they encourage you to take these shots. You don't yeah. defer to these guys yeah, all the time. It. It's like you have that. You take. They it. always tell me to do it. You know, you you do it if it's spot. You all defend. You know, it, it's it's uh, it's um, really great to have them and who who give you that confidence. You know, it's really uh, amazing. It makes you to do better. You know, and uh, and I love it. And I'm happy to to have them. Different player on the field than off, right? <laughs> I know you're there? much quieter off the field, but you're explosive you see me, like, on yeah. the field. <laughs> <laughs> but you're, I mean, you're you're a lot of fun to watch. I think I to add on to Seb's point. I think uh, I think it's your decision making has has hit another level where like you you're starting to see some windows. You're starting to hit those windows. We know you can hit it. I mean, we were here in preseason. We asked Max. We like Max sneaky like someone like don't tell us Carlos has a great shot. We know it. But who's like got a sneaky good shot? He's like Mahalik can sting your palms. He can. And like so, we know you got that, but I think you've added a little bit. Like you know when to dribble, you know when to lay it off, and these little one twos, little connections, I think have been yeah, starting to get there. It's just um, like I said, you have Carlos, Bill, Chicho, and all those kind of in in uh, in the team, and um, you have um, Ante Ante being good to me. You got a name drop because <laughs> he's gonna get mad if he don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ante. Make sure you mention Ante. <laughs> um, and he been good to me. Like he been he been helping me out. Like what I'm lacking in the game. So and he really helped me to improve my skill and um, time to shoot and uh, time to pass, time to run, those kind of things. Yeah. And he really great. And uh, I'm grateful for that. And um, there's still more room for me to learn. And I'm still learning. So and I have a long way to go. And I have Carlos, I have Bill, I have top players who have been in the game for 10, 15 years. So it's a great chance for me to, to learn and, and to prove in myself, you know, so it's good. <laughs> it's good to see that rubbed off uh, on you. And uh, we, guys, we're just so thrilled that we can be along this ride with you uh, on this MLS Cup and for you guys to make some time here on a very busy week. Lots of training. We'll see you guys, and uh, hopefully we celebrate together on Saturday. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Appreciate you guys for having us. Thank oh, you. Well said. These guys, the real. Thanks for the Ante Razov drop. Really important for Mahala's. Because <laughs> you know if he did it. Really important for Mahala's uh, <laughs> rest well, of his week. We're also trying really hard to get him on as a guest, so maybe that'll help us yeah, yeah. get Thank him you. as a guest Thank on the podcast. You. <laughs> Make sure you rate, review, download, subscribe, and tell a friend inside LAFC, the Max Events podcast. We will be here all week.